Hi, welcome. This is Cambridge Host Live. My name is Jonathan Roth. I'm joined now by Bill Murphy. He is the chairman of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. Thanks very much for joining Great us. Great to be here, Jonathan. Thank you. Let's talk about Friday. We had a huge day on Friday. Gold popped after kind of sitting between 1,500 and 1,600. It popped a bit, went over 1,600. And you say that that might have been one of the most historic days ever in terms of the gold prices. What happened? Well, in terms from where God it comes from, I think it was because you can't get into the whole thing, but normally gold trades with an algorithm of situation or with what the gold cartel does to the price. Like if the stock market goes down and even the dollar was up, commodity prices are collapsing. And normally that's when they really go after gold. And they tried it the past few weeks with these waterfall raids. It was bombed down 20 and $30 in, in hours. But this time it came in lower and started to run and moved all by itself and kept going and going and going. And normally, most of the time they stop it at a 1% rise. The maximum is then usually 2%. This time it not only went to 3% higher in a day, but at one point it was up 4%. And it did it all by itself. And what the gold cartel hates is excitement or gold to stand out as what they would call a safe haven, which is, by the way, the silly talk. It's always been a safe haven for the last 13 years. And the media, you know, it goes down, it's not a safe haven. It goes up, it's a, it's a, it, then it is a safe haven. It's gone up 12 years in a row. And it's going to keep on going. But Friday was historic from our standpoint because it broke all the gold cartel rules of, of the things that they do to suppress the price. And it was just, it was unbelievable. Now, So you think the demand was so strong, that's what was pushing it? Yeah, I think they hit a wall of below 1550. They put it down there three or four times and it got going and it just started to feed on itself. And uh, I think uh, the gold cartel's in trouble. And we're going to find out tomorrow because the last rule to be broken is they never allow follow through. If gold follows through tomorrow on the upside in any meaningful way, look out. Well, I mean, from my own perspective, I find it curious that what seemed to be the, the impetus for that pop in gold was a jobs report that, yes, it wasn't great, but it wasn't absolutely awful. It wasn't terrible, right? Like, it wasn't well, the, no. like the bottom, like the end of the world. No, that's so, it, 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 Go ahead. I, what I'm saying is, is that it seemed as if it didn't take much to move it up to that degree, if you understand what I'm saying. So what happens in a situation where Greece officially leaves the euro, right? Well, who knows? I mean, They've been trying to take gold down on all this thing because, again, because the gold cartel sets the tone. They start selling, traders go with them, and the market goes down. Today, everything blew up on the gold cartel. Normally, if you go back over the past 10 years, 90 to 95 percent of the time, around a U.S. jobs report, gold is taken down. Now, and if anybody was going on that trade, they got buried. As I said earlier, all the gold cartel things that they do, that we follow all the time, were broken on Friday. It was really an incredible performance. So, you th I mean, really, we're living in really exciting days in terms of what's going to happen here over the next week or so. You think a lot of what they're doing is going to come out in the light within the next I week? I think it's going to take more time, but I think it's a very good chance they're in trouble. Right. The, the confidence Why? Why do you think that is? Well, the confidence in the whole system's going. Everyone knows Europe's falling apart. Nothing ever changes there. We've got horrible problems with our deficits. They, our politicians can't even stop the rate of increase in our debt. Not cut it, the rate of increase. Then you've got specific things. The J.P. Morgan $2 billion thing was, it could be 10 times that. It makes made no sense for them to come out and declare a $2 billion loss when you make $18 billion. It tells us something's very wrong behind the scenes. Then you've got the Facebook what, fiasco. What do you suspect there? I think they've got some derivative issues uh, in their interest rate uh, swap situation, and they're having trouble unwinding it. And I think it's all going to come out in time. You know, J.P. Morgan's the Fed's bank, so the Fed is working with them and doing everything everything they can to calm the situation down. But it's, uh, there's going to be a lot more to uh, come out of that one. And of course, if, if Morgan gets in worse trouble, then it's it's like a Cascade with other right. banks. Yeah. Right. Now, what you were going to say, Facebook, the situation well, there. Well, it's another I mean, thing. we saw what happened, but give well, me some it's more. On, on top of Morgan, then you've got Facebook, you know, uh, a fiasco. And you then think you, it was engineered that way on purpose? i uh, leave that to other people, but okay. it's a fiasco, and it's, it's, it, it again goes to confidence in the system. Europe, JP Morgan, Facebook, and now the Dow is down on the year. Uh, and I, I think with real estate in the tank, stock market going down, uh, you could easily get to real fear situation very quickly.
Well, we, as you say, we might be there already. We could be there already. Now, your own story in terms of GATA, I find it really fascinating, the story of Andrew McGuire, who was the whistleblower that really, I think, at least in the eyes of many people, gave you guys, I mean, you guys have been working away at this for years and years and years, and then this guy comes along with his story, and it blows the doors off everything. Walk me through his story. Okay, well, Andrew McGuire was a former Goldman Sachs employee, now is a big trader in London. He went to, the, there was a hearing on March 25th, 2010, which he wanted to speak at about what was going on about uh, the manipulation of the markets and silver in particular. He went to the CFTC four months in advance, sent them emails in advance of what JP Morgan was going to do to their traders. What happened was they used to hang out at the same bar after work and the JP Morgan traders were laughing at the speculators and mocking them and because they continued to flush him out of the market. And he got upset about it. And uh, he said, something's got to be done. So he went to the CFTC ahead of time, told them what Morgan was going to do uh, and when ahead of time, and it happened. And he told them how they, they also, they signal other traders what they're doing. They don't do it by email. They don't do it by phone where they can be traced. But he explained to them what was happening. So he thought he was going to speak, and the CFTC wouldn't let him. So he came to me. And as chairman, I got and said, you know, can you get this in there? So I went to Bart Shilton, who I'd met as one of the CFTC commissioners, and I said, Bart, I want to get some stuff in there. And so I had my questioning, and Gary Gensler, the chairman, tried to cut it all off. Bart said, no, 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 no. He said, I, I have another round of questions. So he threw me this softball question, and I read pretty much what Andrew McGuire wanted to say, had a copies of the emails, gave it to the press, uh, and it went viral on the internet. The irony was, of all, there was all these people testifying, I'd say 15 people. The only one that wasn't televised, that was blacked out, was mine. But once that was done, they on, did... On the... On the, the on video. On C-SPAN. Uh, yes. On, well, it wasn't C-SPAN. It was a video thing on the whole internet live. Okay. Mine just went blank. They said it was a technical, technical error. It'd be problem. like now... Sure. If it went, went out. And yeah. so... Uh, that generally doesn't happen. It now. doesn't happen. But what they weren't ready for was this round of questioning. And so... That got live. That went all over the internet, and that's why it got so much attention. But yes, uh, Andrew McGuire is the nicest guy you ever want to meet. Uh, he exposed what was going on in the CFTC. And then somebody tried to murder him. Yes. The, the next, car accident. Yes. The next day, uh, there was a hit and run with he and his wife. Um, the guy tried to get away. He hit two cars trying to get away. There was a helicopter chase. Uh, huh? I mean, it's scary. And. Uh, that's just the way it is when you do what the kind of thing that we do. But anyway, Andrew's a class act. He spoke at our conference in London. I, I think it was the biggest standing ovation I've ever seen in my life. Hmm. Wow. So why do you think that there seems to be... You, look, your story is really controversial, and it's shaking the pillars of, of the status quo. So obviously, I guess that somebody has an, an, a, a, uh, an interest in keeping your story silent to a certain extent. Why is it you don't get much media coverage? You told me before you sat down here, last time you were on CNBC was 13 years ago. Yeah. And once they heard what Gata had to say, nothing. Hmm. Uh, we're hardly even mentioned in the United States, even though we've held four international conferences. We've been right about the gold market 12 years in a row. We have evidence uh, we've collected for 13 years about the gold cartel manipulation. It all fits. We sued the, Fen, the Fed. We got a $3,000 check from them. Uh, you know. We know what we're talking about in this one particular issue, but we're taking on the richest, most powerful people in the world, and people don't want to hear about it. Uh, even today, there are a lot of people that wouldn't talk about market manipulation now admit, yes, the markets are manipulated, but they won't go to gold. Uh, now, now, here's a question for you, because I think this is what some of your critics might say, is that if the gold markets are being manipulated, let's just say they are, well, who's that actually hurting? What's your, what's your answer back? Well, first of all, it's undervalued by, say, $1,000 per ounce. Um, most importantly, what where GATA comes from is that they're manipulating the markets, they're distorting things, and it's leading to the chaos of today. They don't let things trade freely. The plunge protection team and the counterparty risk management group, which most people aren't aware of, it's there to promote stability. They rig the stock market. Everybody knows about the bond markets, how, how low our interest rates are, 1.46% on the 10-year. Uh, they don't let gold, that's why Friday was such a big deal. They don't let it trade freely, saying here's, it's a barometer. And they want, they've been, want to diffuse the barometer. Uh, in 2000, they kept it below 300. Then they realized they were losing too much of it, and they, they've had a managed retreat for the last 12 years. That's again why Friday was so big. All heck broke loose 
and they lost control of their management. Now we have to see if that continues. Right. Now, you have a, you, there was an effort that you guys put forward trying to get Fort Knox to open the vault. W where is that process at? Well, uh, in July, uh, we met with Ron Paul a, a couple of times. Uh, he's a great guy. He's a yeah. true American hero. Uh, he has a, a bill before Congress to audit the Fed. Right. Uh, a lot of co-signers on that. Like 225 guys, yeah. already in, in the House. Yeah. Uh, it's not so far along in the Senate, but uh, watch out if that ever happens, because we, the GATA does not believe uh, all the gold uh, is in the U.S. vault they say they had. There hasn't really been a true audit, maybe ever. I mean, what asset never gets audited? And uh, it's where GATA comes from. We try to get all this information from the Fed, and, and a lot of it, uh, they just won't give out under Freedom of Information Act. If they're not doing anything with 8,135 tons of gold, what is there not to talk about? I mean, but they have, I don't know, hundreds of documents that they won't release. So, in closing here, Doug Casey, very well-known investor, you know, everyone who's probably watching this video knows who Doug Casey is, wrote a really interesting article recently about uh, manipulation in the gold markets, basically questioning whether that's really happening. What's your response back to him? Well, Doug's as smart as they come, and uh, we have the highest respect for him. But when it comes to uh, the gold manipulation story, uh, we, don't, we don't think he knows what he's talking about. And we would ask Doug, how much have you actually read of God as evidence? And if you read the evidence and you follow it, you can't come to any other conclusion. So we would ask Doug, with all due respect, respect, read what we have, and then then comment on it. So you and Doug Casey need to get together for a drink sometime real soon, I would, I would expect. <laughs> well, maybe we'll do it at this conference. You very well might. <laughs> Listen, thanks very much, Bill. Appreciate your time. Thank you, John. Nice to be